hi there, Grant McComey here, and welcome to this week's edition of Travel Oregon's Grant's Getaways. You know, I am a big believer that the best adventures are those that teach you more about the places that you visit, and this week we're in for a real treat as we visit a place that will teach you much about a vast part of Oregon you've likely missed. It's a place that stresses higher education and may just take you to the front of the class as we visit Oregon's High Desert Museum. Oregon, from the Eastern Cascades point of view, plenty of elbow room, wide open vistas, snow shrouded landscapes. It's big sky country that's roomy, remote, and rugged, and offers the sorts of scenes that capture your heart and lead you to wonder, why have I never traveled this way before? It's a question on many visitors' minds at a place where the answer is easy to find and higher education is center stage at the High Desert Museum near Bend. They've seen the sign on the highway for years and finally stopped in and people on a regular basis are blown away by how much is here. They can experience so much of the West through art, culture, history, and natural history, wildlife. We are proud to, that we can be that relevant. The bar originated in western Montana and was restored in Spokane. Large-scale exhibits like the newest called Sin in the Sagebrush serve up sights and sounds and role players in costumes to put you into a scene from Oregon's most recent past. Yes. Going west in itself was taking a chance. And if the weather had killed your sheep, or if you your mining claim wasn't paying off, you were a risk taker just showing up. So perhaps one more turn of the card or a spin of that roulette wheel and things might turn around for you. It's absolutely a delightful spring day, but you will not fool me because it'll freeze again soon. Risk takers included homesteaders like Mrs. Blair, played by local volunteer Linda Evans, who helps you see how tough life was on the high desert in the 1880s. Hardest part of all? Loneliness because I'm 40 and a half miles from the closest town of Prineville and it takes us two days to get there. I go maybe four or five times a year. So we get real lonely, but the children keep us busy and I do love to have visitors. You'll love to visit the many wildlife species too, often quite close at hand. When it's behind a screen or behind glass, you're still removed. When you're up close and you see the feathers move, you see the bird move and pay attention to you, that captures your heart, hopefully makes you want to know more about the animal and gets you that bond. It goes, ooh, ooh. The close connection with wildlife is a legacy message from the museum's founder, Donald Kerr. Yeah. Kerr owned a passion for wildlife and believed animals could connect with newcomers and perhaps change attitudes about the high desert. We're very proud here at the High Desert Museum that all the animals you see here were either captive born or they've been through rehabilitation and cannot be released. They're imprinted on human beings or they're injured. We're giving them a second chance. We're giving them a second chance to educate. Education and recreation. It's all here and easy to find on your next visit to Oregon's high desert. It's a jewel, it's a treasure of central Oregon. I think what I love the most about a visit to the High Desert Museum are those aha moments where you get to discover, see, maybe even touch something brand new. The High Desert Museum is made for those teachable moments. And we've provided all the details and the directions on the Travel Oregon website, a place you definitely want to check out. So until next week, get out here and explore the Oregon outdoors and let Travel Oregon be your guide. For Travel Oregon, I'm Grant McComey.